All right, let's talk about this with Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger of Illinois. Congressman, thanks for joining us. Uh, your reaction to what we just heard from the president? Well, look, I agree with the Supreme Court's decision uh, upholding the lower court because, you know, this is a debate that belongs in Congress. It belongs in elections, election cycles. These are debates to have. It does not belong in a president who decides he's not getting what he wants, therefore makes an executive order. I agree with the idea of immigration reform. I think it's something we need. I've been very outspoken about it. But it's something that has to be sustainable coming through the House of Representatives. And, you know, simply the president's frustration on inaction is not an excuse to put forward an executive order and I think one of the things people forget is at the point he launched this executive order a few years ago we were actually making progress to a bipartisan immigration reform solution and once that happened could we have gotten there I don't know but once that happened that executive order was put out both sides went to their corner and there was no progress well how far would you go in supporting comprehensive immigration reform congressman because we know that uh, Donald Trump, the presumptive Republican nominee, he wants to deport immediately, what, 11 million undocumented immigrants in the United States. He says they have to go back to their countries. The good ones, he says, they can eventually come back to the United States. He's the leader of your party right now. Where do you stand on this? Well, look, obviously, I've been very clear. I don't agree with a lot of what Donald Trump says. And in fact, I'm not supporting him right now. Um, I, it's, it's unrealistic. It's, it's not humane to say you're just going to basically send out the paddy wagons and deport 11 million people. So what we need to do is recognize that they're here. And so I think getting a pathway to legalizing them here, having them pay taxes, be productive citizens, uh, is, is the answer to start, as well as border security. That's going to be essential. These are things that if we put them hand to hand together, they're an 80 percent issue with the American American public. The problem is where the breakdown happens is when the president says he's frustrated that he's not getting what he wants through Congress and he's going to do it by executive order. And the Supreme Court had their voice heard on that today. And, and the Supreme Court ruled that he didn't have that authority, at least uh, for now. He's not ruling it out down, down the road right now. But don't you feel bad for those four million people who began to come out of the uh, shadows, if you will, started registering, hoping to start a new life. Some of their children uh, were our American citizens, were born in the United States, were legal here, and now potentially, once again, they have to start fearing about this notion they could be deported, these families could be ripped apart. Yeah, of course I feel bad for it, and that's why I've been a very aggressively saying we need to do immigration reform. We need to do it in a way that we can find the solution that you know is going to secure the border and allow those folks to become taxpayers. But you know, doing that through the executive order and putting both sides in their corner, frankly, I think has done more harm than good in the long run. We were close. Now, again, I, I can't. I don't have a crystal ball. I can't predict whether we would have reached good bipartisan immigration reform. But I will tell you, we were way further along in achieving that until the executive order happen. And I know that there were people basically asking the administration to delay on doing that because of the fact that we were making progress. I don't have a crystal ball whether it would have happened or not. I don't know. But it needs to happen. It needs to happen going forward, but within the construct of the Constitution, which is, you know, the House of Representatives and Senate to make those I know you don't support uh, Donald Trump as the next president of the United States, but he makes the, the case if, if you don't vote for him, Hillary Clinton will be the president, and the Supreme Court nominees she puts forward, they could have an impact for not just four or eight years, but for 20 or 30 years down the road, will be very different than the conservative nominees he would put forward. What's your reaction to that? Well, you know, look, I, it's a very compelling case. We're, we're concerned with what the Supreme Court looks like, and, and that's why I've said I want to get to where I can support the Republican nominee. I'm not a never-Trump guy, but I'm an American before I'm a Republican, and a lot of the things he said has been very concerning to me. And, uh, and so I can't just automatically support him simply because he's the Republican nominee, though he rightfully is. Uh, but, yeah, I think there's a very compelling case to be made for Supreme Court, and we'll see if he makes that case instead of some of the other outlandish things he's been, he's been saying. Let me get your quick reaction to the other breaking news we had uh, at the top of the hour. They, the Democrats have just ended their sit-in on the floor of the House. They wanted a vote on gun control. That vote uh, is not happening, at least not happening anytime soon. Your reaction? Well, I mean, you know, of course, I'm all for having the debate. I've said that. I, you know, I think we were making progress to some kind of a piece of, uh, of bipartisanship in terms of background checks with terrorists no fly list. But a sit-in, I mean, that was a, and I know it's kind of inside baseball, but that's a huge breakdown of how the House operates. It was great for their social media, whatever they wanted to achieve there. But for long-term ramifications, we have a, a level of respect that we debate in out here, and that allows this, this uh, area to function. So I hope this is not long 
term because this leads to a breakdown of, frankly, civil debate, which is extremely important in a republic like ours. Yeah, well, Democrats are recalling, uh, as I'm sure you, I don't, you weren't in the Congress back in 2008, when the Democrats were the majority, Nancy Pelosi was the speaker, Republicans staged a sit-in as well over another issue uh, involving energy. Uh, so that... Uh, this isn't the first time this has happened here in Washington. That was, a, that was during a recess, though. That's important to note as well. And the Democrats at that time, when Nancy Pelosi was the speaker, uh, they just shut off the lights uh, yeah. in the House chamber as well, and as in addition to going into recess. All right, uh, we'll continue to watch all of this. Adam Kinzinger of Illinois, thanks very much for joining us. You bet. We'll